Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Who's here? Wanda's here. I think I better refresh my chat over here. Do we only have two people in there? Is that all? It is 530, right? I think we only have 630 by my clock. We have Wanda and Hiram. Oh, live coin Q&A's here. One. Litecoin Q&A put up. I know that was supposed to go in the private chat. Yeah. I haven't been here in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just sit here and, and talk amongst ourselves until people show up. Are you trying to distract her? I am trying to distract you. Wanda. Hello, you Wanda. Mike Combs. Mike Combs. Yes, back. Here they go. Yeah, there's trouble it's tonight. Back. <laughs> Hello, Hiram. <laughs> Slow nights. All right. What did you do, Sean? Nothing. <laughs> did you scare them all away? I tried and failed miserably. They just oh keep coming God. out of the woodwork. There's Amber. Oh, Amber's here. You can start. Hey Amber. Hey Amber. Okay. So we'll give, her, we'll give everyone a few minutes to get acclimated. Uh, we have a couple of a uh, couple of seasoned faces back in the fold here. They paid us. Who are you calling season? <laughs> <laughs> Just because I got salt and pepper hair, don't make me seasoned. No, I was going to say you've been salty lately. Scott Holiday. Hello, Sean. I like how they address you first. Hello, yeah, Sean. Sean. And panel. Hello, Sean. Hello. I'm just a regular guy. Come on. I know I, I have great hair and great dance moves, but that's the side of it. <laughs> if they saw what you did after the show goes off air, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got my dollar bills ready right here. If that's only. all right. You know, that's that's why we have the live coin Q and A only fans page for the cutscenes. I'm a little short on dollar bills this week, though, Sean. Will you take pennies? Well, you get I like uh, I like how Carl changed his picture. First, he had a mask on, and now it's gone. So it's, I don't know if there was like some hitting meaning there. Oh, there's oh, back. Oh, Judy Hart, Randy Collins. I never want to see them masks again. Yeah, you can be in the after party, Amber. I'll send you a link. <laughs> you really want to come up after the after live, Amber? I'll send you the link. Oh boy, she might be scarred. That'd no, be we fun. Need to, we need to get her on anyway. <laughs> Chris is like, oh yeah, she's gonna be scarred, and Jeff's like, it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's like Coyote Ugly for the first time, right? There's, there's certain things you can't unsee. Some things you can't unsee. Yeah, like Blue's new avatar picture. Where are you at, buddy? Oh, it's sexy. Oh, he's not using that in chat. I'm darned. <laughs> no well, I'll bore everybody with, with the boring no. opening spiel since everybody's probably already heard it. Welcome to the live coin QA, everybody. <laughs> Emergency exits are located. So welcome everybody to our Monday night live coin Q and A. Did we just freeze for a second, or was that just me? I'm having I'm having Frank. real computer issues. What? I said Frank. Frank Dodger. What's that? Um, I am hosting this week's show. I am Paula Bloom. Um, I no longer have a YouTube channel. And I'm happy about it. <laughs> um, I have had to leave YouTube. I was not happy about it at first. Um, I've had some issues and I'm taking care of them. And so I missed my crew so much that I've decided to come back and join them now. I've been still working on behind the scenes, but I miss their faces. So welcome back, Paula. Thanks. You can find me all over Facebook, pissing people off daily. <laughs> <laughs> My job. So we're going to go around and do a little 
uh, round robin, let everybody on the panel introduce themselves. Uh, we will start with, since I'm just going to go this way or that way, I'm going to go that way. Um, let me go do the solo layouts and say hi. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am uh, Blue Ridge Silver Cougar. <laughs> hey, I, I'm the 40 plus crowd. I, I guess I could elude my say. I might just change my channel on that. But, anyways, uh, you guys know me as a hound on the old YouTube. Um, been collecting coins for over 25 years. Enjoying every moment of it. I think my my revelation came when I was able to share all my enthusiasm for the hobby with the uh, collective people via YouTube and Facebook and all that. And um, here I am on the live coin Q and A panel. Uh, happy to be here as always. And you guys have a wonderful night. We're gonna again with some emails and uh, talk what we talk, and that's coins. Yay! Uh, oh, busted. Hi. Hey, everybody. Some of you know me, some of you don't. For those who know me, hi. Welcome back. I don't know why I'm here still to this day, but they keep asking me back, so I must be doing something right. Um, it's been a while. I had a lot of stuff going on. I'm a busy man. And uh, I'm glad to be back. Uh, I'm already having fun and messing around with people. And I got a few tricks up my sleeve for the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for those tricks. Uh, I am Chris. I'm all over you, uh, Facebook, just like Sean and Paula and everybody else on the panel. Um, I love errors and varieties. That's usually why I'm here. Uh, but I love all things coin related, including the people that surround me on the panel. I love you guys. Thanks for having me back. Oh, sucks. Now we missed you. Yeah, we did miss you. When Diana D came in, arugula, arugula. I don't know how to say your name. Orgula. Really? Arugula? Orgula. <laughs> Mike Combs, uh, Mac McBride, Captain Jigga, welcome, welcome. We're going to finish making some introductions here. Hey, everybody. Um, my name's Adam. I've been collecting for over a decade, and I enjoy uh, Lincoln Scents and uh, cherry picking, and I like to do Franklin Half Dollars, um, and I hope everybody has a good night. Short and sweet. Um, let me get this guy up. Oh, no, not you. Where is he? There he is. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Carl, or CMUS Omaha, and I'm one of the new guys here at the Live Coin Q&A. Excuse me a minute. I had to clear my throat. <laughs> and... I'm still kind of surprised and thrilled and that I was asked to be on this panel. It's the first night uh, to co-host with uh, Christopher. Nice Hello, to meet you, Christopher. Nice to meet and, you. You're uh, in for a surprise. Uh oh, tonight or in the future sometime? <laughs> I uh, specialize in uh, BU roles of Lincoln Memorial Sense, looking for varieties and errors and uh, dabbled in uh, boxes of quarters now and then. I like looking through those for the uh, varieties on the circulated quarters. I love the W's. And I enjoy trying to help you folks with your coin questions. Uh, I, I get some self-satisfaction of, of helping you guys out do that. So I hope we have a good show for you tonight and that you enjoy and learn something. Awesome. We're lucky to have you, Carl. And we last, love you. certainly not least. Hey, uh, my name is Jeff Stanley, and um, I specialize in a little bit of everything. There's a, I've, uh, I'm 
pretty known to go and hop from series to series and then come back to others. Others I may kind of leave behind, but uh, for the most part, um, I collect a little bit of everything. Anything U.S. Co coinage, I dabble in some world coinage. Um, I fill albums. I do registry sets. Um, I am um, pretty heavy in varieties. Errors, I'm a little bit... Uh, less prone to collect um unless they're uh, you know the right price but i will uh i will collect them certainly if i find them i'm going to pick them up but um for the, for the for the most part i collect everything awesome yeah he just got a beautiful gold buffalo or, oh. not a buffalo oh no the jefferson yes beautiful. and let's see shannon smith came in um spikehead die crack and let's see who was it mike combs you love the hat well lucky for you we actually have some of those for sale if you'd like to purchase one see that email right above right there you can go there and inquire about a hat or you can go to our website if one of our mods wants to put up our website um live coin qa Let's see, what is it? I forget. LiveCoinQA.com, right? Yep. LiveCoinQA.com. You can order them directly off of there. And all the proceeds go directly back to the channel to support our website and our stream yards. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, Frank. And let's see who else came in. Spike Head Die Crack. Um, Kimberly Bean, there was somebody else that was new that I think Amber brought in. Um, let's see. Di oh, I said Diana B. Okay. Jordan, where do you all live? Oh. I will give you my exact address if you're sending <laughs> gifts. <laughs> <laughs> so a few, uh, few little quick announcements um, before we get right into the emails we don't have a lot of emails so tonight's going to be a short show and have a little bit of a lengthy discussion about a certain coin towards the end but uh, as you all know like carl's uh, picture down there the new strike at rich pocket change books have come out so um keep an eye out for those um we are over there somewhere i have one i have two on my shelf right there <laughs> You have a new one coming. Oh, you got it. Um, we're going to be having some new content on the channel. Um, we're probably going to start doing, a, a, most of it's going to be uh, just videos that we're going to upload. We're going to start trying to do something like a Wednesday wrap up. And where we'll talk about a, one particular coin for just a few minutes and go into depth about it, um, some more learning stuff. Uh, Sean's going to be doing something with various members uh, as he can. Um, that will probably be uploaded on a, on a regular day. They'll do the video whenever they can. Um, They'll pop up when you least expect it. It's going to be a nice surprise. Expect. Just make sure that you're subscribed and you click that bell so you get notified whenever they come on. Um, and the panel members are all going to start doing little informational, um, educational videos for y'all to get y'all learned up on coins and errors and varieties um, so that you can decide which direction you want to go in this hobby. If, it's, if you want to start just building your collection and buying coins, the more information you have, the more education you have, the better. Um, we want to make great collectors. We we are all firm believers in in uh, education in this hobby and getting you guys accurate information and um, helping you become better collectors and, and making sure you have fun. So that's we we all have kind of a passion for education. I bring the fun. You are the fun. You're a you're a bucket of fun. And I want to jump in that bucket. Ooh, did I just say that? Whoa. I didn't say that. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going. Uh, I'm going. There it goes. Paula's back and the show just goes. That's poor elephant. Thanks for being this kid friendly. <laughs> poor elephant. Sorry. 
anyway, so uh, yeah, anybody else have anything that they want to talk about as far as uh, announcements or new interesting fun stuff coming up? But Leaky Bucket, he's the Leaky Bucket. <laughs> Good one, Frank. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Let's see. I don't know. I'm out of money. Nobody put Paul in. <laughs> Everybody's broke. Everybody's broke. New Morgans are coming out uh, 24th. Um, yeah, the, the CC yes. and the O Privy point, uh, Morgans will be out on the 24th. For so. free, yeah. Make sure you do the remind me function. That's going to be a little bit easier for you if you're looking to get get a few. Yep. Yep. And I've seen a lot of people panicking because it says pre-order and they think, Am I, where's the pre-order? I'm missing the pre-order. They're all pre-order because they're, you're not going to get them until October. Yeah. So they're just yep. considering it all pre-order. So when you see pre-order, it's really just order, but you're not going to get them for a few months. So. Yeah, don't don't get them if your intention is to flip get them, them and flip yeah. them really quick and over over leverage yourself. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think the con the concept of a pre order because the mint has never done one like that uh, kind of tripped a lot of people out. So you know, yeah. it's it, it is what it is. Uh, a lot of other industries do pre-orders and pre-sales for video games and all that. And, mm -hmm. you know, they've done it with success. So this is just another instance where you begin to see, you know, one change. And, you know, it's a change that I think will will be pretty good. Uh, it'll, it'll curb a lot of the, the, the flippers that, that want to get into it right away. It's next so, Monday, isn't it? Whenever Monday, the yeah. Is, yeah. It is next Monday. Yeah. Yep, so uh, they're kind of, I think it's kind of a crappy time for them to release them because everybody's kind of broke at the end of the month, but whatever. <laughs> Maybe that was planned so that they, there wouldn't be so much fighting. I don't know. Yeah, well, the, the two points I'll have the most buzz keep in mind are going to be the first two releases off of 24. Mm -hmm. well, uh, the other ones, things will begin to kind of die down a little bit. Your best shot at getting any of them will probably be the... Uh, the S mint or D mint or the Philly mint. So, a little more word of And yeah. I have a sneaking suspicion they're going to come out with a set. Probably. Yeah. Well, well, they got product limits posted on there and not vintage limits. So, yeah, there is going to be some sort of auxiliary set that they're going to do, I'm sure. Um, and then you'll probably see that this fall when the others drop. Just in time for Christmas. Exactly. When we're broke, then too. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, oh, A and B McGee. Say hello to A and B McGee. I'm making everybody say hi. That's my daughter. She's Prego. Hi. She's hey. Prego. Hi. She's having a little girl in August. Soon I have two new grandbabies coming. I have a little girl grandbaby coming in August and a little boy grandbaby coming in September. So oh does, does this mean she's going to change her name to A, B, and C, McGee? <laughs> yes. That's a good idea. No, it's A, B, and B. <laughs> Darn it. When will the mint bill you for them? T time of order. Time of order. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, it's been 20 minutes. Are we ready for a coin yet? We're ready. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll switch over to our first one here. And I'm looking a little glitchy sometimes on my screen, you guys in chat. So if you guys, do you guys notice any lag or anything? Just let me know. Um, I'm not sure what I can do about it, but let me know anyway. Okay. Hang on, Jeff. Let me pull you up. All right, Chris. Chris? <laughs> huh. From yeah. Coin Junkie AG. Hey, guys. Hope all is well. I'd like the thoughts of the panel on two coins. First coin is a blank planchet I purchased. I'm not sure what the error is, 
but caught my eye and having a bit of trouble identifying it. Second coin is a super exciting one, as I call it my best bank score to date. I believe I found two wrong planchet errors. Any info or thoughts are appreciated. All right, so I've got them split up into two picture sets. I thought that was the best way to uh, show them off here. Excellent. Don't be playing no tricks on me. I know how you guys do. So here's the first one. Frank said it sounds like I'm in a garage. That's because I'm in my new office and there's no furniture yet. So I'm sorry. I'll try to talk quiet. Get an area rug, woman. Uh, ew. No. <laughs> so I think the question was on this large void on this side of the planchet. Um, so it, it's, it's a tough one, but what i see is uh on the left side of that void where that void is starting i can still see the rim and it looks like the rim is actually detached and getting pushed into that void so that kind of tells me that this was somehow damaged um you talk about that like that little piece no right i'm here. actually talking about the other side where the large the right large here? void is yeah, yeah so if you take oh, right here right there that that's the rim that's the rim getting pushed ah. into the void and that that's what really sold it for me at first i wasn't sure because it, it it almost looks like there might have been a void in the planchet at the very top center uh, of this picture it, it looks better on when you flip the coin um it almost looks like there was some sort of little void there right at the very top um but seeing that rim if there was a void there when this planchet went through the upsetting mill, there wouldn't be a rim. So there would be nothing to form a rim. And the fact that there's a rim there and it's getting pushed into the void tells me it's damaged. Now, do, do we know if this is a uh, copper-coated sink or is this a bronze planchet? Or? It sure looks copper. Because, so here's the thing, if that was a copper coated zinc, then I would be more inclined to say that that was truly an error since uh, you're not seeing any exposed zinc. So that would mean that that defect was there before that, that coin was plated. Yeah, David Car Carlos on chat says it's damaged because he did it. <laughs> yep, you jerk. <clears throat> Just keep your keep your keep your planchets away from David Carlisle, everybody. <laughs> so there's so my thinking is maybe this went to the upsetting mill and got kicked out somehow and caught in some machinery. It's very possible. Oh. It could have happened at the mint. It could have happened after it left the mint. What about how a cashier will break open a new roll of pennies by banging it on a cash register drawer? <laughs> <laughs> could, could be. I, I must confess, that's actually how I open all of my coin rolls when I'm coin roll hunting. I have yet to damage one like this, so. But, uh, yeah, I, I would say this is damage. It's, it's a shame. It's pretty cool to find in, in a roll, but. She's boogered up. I would still keep it though. Yeah. Oh, I would yeah, definitely, keep definitely, it. definitely keep it. If anything, it'll be uh, a nice sample coin of what something like this would look like damaged yeah. for, for what that's worth. You know, the, the good news is blank planchets can be had for under five bucks. So it's not like, you know, it's not like you're staking a $500 coin, you know. Very cool. Yeah. Now for the hard one. Now for the hard one. Welcome back, Chris. Gee, thanks. Yeah, well, at least you didn't like, lose sleep over it. <laughs> How do you know? Because, well, have, well, you might have. I don't know. I might lose sleep tonight. You might. And that's Where that. <laughs> One moment, please. 
Okay. So this this coin uh, has been the subject of much discussion uh, before me and much discussion with me. Um, the thoughts are that this coin um, was a a dime planchet struck by quarter dies, and these are known to exist. There's plenty of them out there, um, although much scarcer. Uh, with the Canadian mint, uh, you, you'll find these more often on U.S. coins, but the Canadian mint has made some. There are some graded examples out there. Um, this was found, uh, I'm assuming, in, in a bankroll, but I don't know if it was a U.S. bankroll or a Canadian bankroll. Um, did anybody actually get that information, by the way? Um, I think it was Canadian. I, I think that that's what he was uh, on his video, what it showed. But okay. I'm not positive, but I think it was Canadian. Because he did find a Canadian dime. So all of those coins that you see lined up there are things that he found in while he was searching. Yeah. Okay. So after much deliberation and discussion, um, I think we're all pretty much on the same page with this. We're not 100% sure, but very sure, uh, almost certain that this was an intentionally made uh, error, I guess. It, it's not really an error if it's intentionally made. Um, the ones that we found that are known examples of this error type, um, basically it's, it's the wrong planchet getting struck by a larger denomination. Um, all of the ones that we can find, both U.S. and Canadian, all show weakness around the outer edge of the, the coin in question. This one, on the other hand, every device is sharp all the way out to the very edge of the coin. In this picture here, where you can see the word sense being cut off, it's sharp right to the edge. There is no weakness in the design there's no uh, deterioration or metal flow or anything like that uh, the coin itself is perfectly round which can happen with these off planchet strikes but typically they're not completely round like this and the owner of this coin said that it is the exact same diameter as a, a canadian dime and the thinking is, if it were a Canadian dime planchet getting struck in a quarter die chamber, there is no collar die to uh, keep it from expanding. So it should expand a little bit under the pressure of the strike. Uh, no, Captain Jigga, there is no reeds on the edge. Um, it's smooth. So the reeds are actually placed on the coin during the strike. So uh, that wouldn't show. They're a part of the collar die. So uh, my thinking is that this was intentionally made. Um, Sean, do you have anything to add? or? Oh, let's see. The only thing I want to add, <clears throat> because the telltale sign on this one, um, to where it leaves a lot of doubt of it being a genuine error, is just how strong the strike is on a much thinner planchet than a quarter planchet. The um, the mid presses are calibrated with certain authorization for that denomination. Um, so because this is a much thinner planchet being produced in a quarter die press, um, there's it, the, the design is just too well struck on this one. Usually I see them uh, just, a, just a little bit on the weak side. So that leaves that leaves some question as to its authenticity. My personal feeling, because coins of this type um, are highly coveted north of the border, um, so similar coins have sold for a con considerable premium compared to its U.S. counterparts. I would say the the best course of action, if you wanted to authenticate its status as being a coin struck on a different sized planchet is to send it off to a PCGS or NGC. 
strictly for that reason, not for trying to get a high grade or anything, uh, but making sure that it's authentic and genuine before before you decide to sell something like this. You know, it, it's it's a it's a radical enough error that you'll want to authenticate it anyways. Um, it, it just makes it easier with the sale. You know what you have, you, you know, and you also get uh, not just one person who's grading it, but there are a number of people who audit the grader's grade and so on. So you have a number of people actually looking at, at these things. So that would be my next course of action. Um, I'm kind of 50-50 on it. I, I'm really unsure because I just don't see that many Canadian errors of this type. I see plenty of U.S. Um, off planchet strikes and uh, am pretty, pretty confident in the way those look. Um, things might just operate a little bit differently at the Royal Canadian Met, so that might come into play as well. Um, that's what I would do for the and owners. That's, and that's the variable I think that's tripping all of us up, is that we are well-versed in the U.S. minting process. The Canadian men pr minting process may be just that much different that uh, that would there, there's something that we're not considering in this. Um, I, I would suggest maybe something in the middle, if it, if at all possible, the possibly getting it getting it in the hands of uh, somebody who can do a close examination of it, you know, at a show or something like that. Somebody who knows errors quite well, who might be able to take a look at it. Yeah, uh, if Blue Junkie wants to email us, uh, we can certainly get him in touch with them. I'm sure Ken Potter would love to take a peek at these. Yeah. Yeah, uh, another good person uh, who I've dealt with on a few occasions is uh, uh, so, uh, Jim Sullivan of uh, Sullivan Numismatics. Mm -hmm. He deals specifically with error coins, and it doesn't matter what country. You could you could just as easily send him an email, and you never know. You might even get an offer from him because he's a buyer too. But uh, he'll he'll set the record straight. So you have a few mm -hmm. different different ways you could go with this. Uh, I'm not saying it's outside of our scope. If this was a U.S. coin that that's sitting in front of us, we would all feel pretty confident in, in you know what we have. But seeing as how this is Canadian, and you just don't see this that often, uh, I think there are other other avenues that you should utilize to, like a second opinion, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so Dave asked, uh, it's Dave asked, what does it weigh? Well, um, it weighs spot on for Canadian dime. But if somebody really wants to um, to counterfeit an error like this or or make one on their own, um, it would be pretty simple to get the weight down to uh, real close, if not perfect. Um, yeah, like I said, the only the only thing that that's uh, that's giving me a little doubt is you know the the strike is very strong on a thin planchet and i would say because it's so strong this this coin should should balloon out just a little bit longer than than a regular dime especially when there's no collar present uh as a result of a much smaller planchet so see seeing the side by side that jeff and jeff had on a moment ago um showed the coin about about dead even in size with a with a dime Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think what's confusing <laughs> about this is uh, looking at this picture. It appears to be the same thickness as the dime, but if you compare it to the quarter, the quarter appears much thicker. The thing we have to remember is that the quarter is actually it has a raised rim on the obverse and reverse, which makes it appear much thicker than. It is in the center of the coin. So, Pretty high rim too. You know, that's something we have to look at. Um, also, uh, what Sean was talking about, you know, these dies uh, are calibrated. It, it's called the stroke. And the length of the stroke is calibrated so that they don't clash together if a planchet doesn't enter the chamber. So with that being said, uh, you know, 
we wouldn't see a full strike on a dime clamp that being struck by quarter dies. And you can do yeah, a simple one is search. What's that? This one is particularly hammered. Yeah, it's very, very yeah, it's a very, very good strike. I mean, you can see all the details in her crown. Um, all of the beads are fully struck, even right up to the point where they the beads go off the edge of the coin. So mm -hmm. you could do a simple Google search and just type in quarter struck by or uh yeah, quarter struck on dime planchet. Now don't be confused. There's also quarters struck on dime stock. A uh, little bit of a different thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, as Shannon is saying here, the stroke was calibrated to a quarter. It should be weak all over the coin for a yeah. dime. That's exactly. Correct. And if you if you Google uh, quarter struck on dime planchet, uh, you'll come across a few images, and some of them are weak on the entire coin itself. Or some of them are weak only around the edge. Uh, but there's always weakness in the devices. Yeah, and, that, and that's why the respective mints do the die adjustment strikes. You guys have heard that before. <clears throat> is to ensure that the pressurization or the stroke for that, that thickness of coin holds true. So that way you get a, a nice, strong, strong strike without putting too much wear and tear on the, uh, the press. Jeff, can you show the edge shot one more time? Yeah, I just want to point out, as people in chat have noticed, um, those are Q-tips. Like, how genius is that? He has Q-tips as tongs. I just had to point that out. I when, think that's pretty genius. When, that, that's when interesting. I, that's, that's when I was first uh, going through the picture sets, um, that I, I saw that first. I'm like, oh, I got to save it just for the Q-tip. I didn't even notice it until people in chat said something. Did you I'm show like, Schumar? I was just going to say that is completely going to be Schumar approved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Schumar needs to see that. I can finally stop using my lineman's pliers to hold my coins. Oh, no. You're going to give him a heart attack. I, I just I just had to, that. I think that's pretty genius. <laughs> Just make sure there's no ear wax on them. Make sure they're not used. Yeah. So, Coinosaurus has has a, a good question here. Um, someone at the mint may be playing around. My answer to that is no. And <laughs> whether or not a mint employee purposely struck a dime planchet in the chamber or it happened by accident, it's still a dime planchet in a quarter chamber, and certain things are going to happen. In this case, I believe it was, it started out its life as a quarter and somebody filed or ground down uh, the diameter of the coin to make it match a dime and try to pass it off as an error. Yeah. So, yeah. Coin the source Rex. That's my educated guess. I think that that was very well explained and um, on point. And I think that suggesting that he send it to somebody who can look at it in person, measure it, weigh it, you know, look at it really, really close in our scope, everything. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that should be done. Well, yeah, 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 Scott, it, it is still thin, and that, that's the thing. That's the reason why I'm 50-50 on it. Um, it just it needs to go to a specific error professional um that does that that specializes in some of the weird stuff like that I, i'm trying to explain it and i know it's hard to understand but if you take a quarter any quarter take a u.s quarter and uh grind the edges off of it so that the the design rim is no longer there the quarter is going to be thinner because the interior design, the interior of the coin is thinner than the design rim, the edge. So if you have, you know, a millimeter of extra height on both sides and you take that off, you now lost two millimeters of thickness. Now, that's just an example. So it just makes it appear much thinner than you would normally see because the edge is gone. <laughs> 
There's no edge there anymore. Amber made a really good point. Uh, 1970D U.S. quarters, there's thousands of known 1970D quarters struck on dime stock. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not a dime planchet. This is dime stock. It's the thickness of a dime, but it was cut to the size of a quarter before being struck. Even that full-size planchet in the chamber being struck by the quarter dies shows weakness on the entire coin. So there's a collar die still holding the coin from expanding, and there's still weakness there. So now take that and add another extreme. Make the, make the planchet even smaller than the collar die. So when it gets struck, it's going to want to expand. And in this case, it just didn't expand, and you have full sharp details. So I can only go by what I see, and, and that's what's telling me that this was made. But... As we said, we don't really fully understand the Canadian minting process. It could be totally off the wall. Um, so maybe we're not understanding how these things can happen. But I would have to guess that their process is very similar to ours. Well, and we minted several. We minted a lot of Canadian coins. Did we mint this year? I don't know. I mean, we have always minted, you know, other countries' coins, you know, throughout time. So mm -hmm. um, if we're uh, minting the same thing they're minting, they kind of have to match. So I would have to yeah. assume that our processes are very similar. That's it. Somebody else's turn. I'm done. But that's a perfect example for you guys to see how, how when we look at coins and we when we diagnose them there's a process and we we go from the beginning of the the minting process all the way through to figure out how some how a certain thing can happen or how it can't happen and the way chris and and sean just explained that was perfect um explained how even even telling you about the the die adjustment um, that's not something you typically learn when you learn about the minting process, but it's important and an important step. So, but this is, this is the study. This is why it takes so much study. Why this part of the hobby is, is intense and difficult and worth it. Totally worth it. But it does take, it does take a lot. It was, we're, we're, we're glad we're glad that he he took the time to send that to us. Heck yeah! You, you probably didn't get the finite answer you were looking for, and we do apologize. But it would be a disservice if we didn't show it because we do know of people and other professionals that deal with this stuff on, on a daily basis. That's their livelihood. Um, so you know, it, it doesn't end with us. We do know a word to refer you guys for special circumstances like this thank you by the way for showing this to us it's neat i i think you have something good going here we just need to finish it up you know get it to yeah. a professional have a look at it and i'll give you uh i think the finality you know that you're looking for yeah and keep us posted for sure let us know what happens because Absolutely. Uh, we we love it when you guys follow through with stuff yeah. And, uh, at the end of the day, guys, stuff like this really needs to be seen in hand. You know, yeah. pictures only tell so much of a story. Sometimes you really have to see the stuff in hand to make, you know, the final call. So didn't, didn't uh, Coin Junkies email mention he has two coins like this? Did we see in both coins? Video, he found two and they were both pretty identical. Did uh, we see pictures of both tonight or not? No, he only sent one. But in the video, I mean, he doesn't show, it's a very short video. He's like super excited. I think he did a cartwheel at one point or something, but um, he shows both of them, but not like up close or anything like that. So um, yeah. I, th I think at this point, if you were gonna show anybody both points, it would have to be, you know, a couple of those referrals that we had mentioned. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if he's going to watch us back or not, um, but we'll follow through with him in an email. I haven't seen him in chat. 
Uh, we'll definitely follow through with him in an email. We can give him, Sean, if you want to uh, either let one of us know what, how he can get a hold of Sullivan. And sure. Then, uh, I, I have his email, so I, I could, uh, I could okay. correspond with him and um, hook him up with him. Look okay. in any Neuroscope magazine and you can find his email yeah. right there, too. That's <laughs> true. That's true. I just got one a couple of days ago. If you're at, if you're at a show, the way you know Sullivan's table. There, so. If if you're at a show, the way you know Sullivan's table is the craziest crap you can imagine out on the out on the table. I mean, well, I mentioned Ken Plotter because he's actually like starting an actual like attribution list and stuff yeah. for coins and stuff. So um, he's getting he's getting pretty involved with that. Um, so. I mean, we can give him several resources, and whoever gets it first. <laughs> the first time, the first time I ever met Sullivan, you know what he did? He said, "Open your hand." So I opened my hand. He he poured a whole bunch of waffle quarters in my hand. I was like, "I already know what these are." <laughs> he must have poured like forty of them in my hand. Oh, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, whole roll. I wish somebody would do that. Work, yeah. More, please. <laughs> Can I have some more, please? Nice, nice guy, though. Yeah. I, I probably trust him a little bit more than uh, than Mike Byers. I'm not saying Mike Byers is a bad guy. It's just, <laughs> you know. <laughs> in, he, case he, said, in case you're watching, he's watching some controversial stuff, you know, the last few years. All right. Uh, so this is for Adam. <clears throat> All right, from Koi Lovers. Hi, guys. Today I have three coins to look at. First is a 1954 Ben Franklin, which I believe is an FS402. The second coin is a 1951 Ben Franklin FS402. I wanted you guys to look at him because... You know, we all have mistaken coins in the past, and I would like your opinion. Very nice coin, very nice grade. All right, I'm gonna start with the, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, I'm gonna start with the 54. Okay. And uh, yeah, I like I, I like seeing them unattributed like that. Those are that presents that challenge. Way to cherry pick them, that's for sure. It's a lot of fun that way. All right, so here's the, the reverse, pretty reverse. Yep. And here is our money shot. And is this the fifty four? That is the fifty four. Okay. Yeah, this is the FS402. Out of the note. And it's a booger variety. Yeah, that is correct. Booger. <laughs> Don't eat the boogers. For, for obvious reasons. <laughs> All right, so the next one is, this one looks raw. And this is the 51. Got some very dark terminal point. Uh, Tony, yeah. Wouldn't call it full bell. No, not full bell. Not close. <clears throat> but yes, this is the FS four O two also. And Adam, where can we attribute all of these? For you anybody? can go to Franklin Lovers at yolosite.com. Okay, I am going to Yolo. Just, you can post a link in the chat. You getting it, or I don't know how to do it. So I get it. No, <laughs> I, I can figure I can that get, out I can, yet. I can get it really fast. Okay. 
and that's specifically the page with the variety guide. Yeah, and then um, there's a lot of information on, you know, you can check, obviously, NGC's uh, Variety Plus. You can also go on PCGS Coin Facts, and you can look at examples that they have attributed also, which will help. Right. And that's when you start cherry picking, that's one thing you want to do. You want to go out there and see um, if, you know, if, if they're even attributing it in any of, any of the uh, big three or big, you know, the NGC and PCGS um, before you lay, if you're going to lay extra money um, down on it. Now on this 51, the FS402 here, PCGS commonly mistakes it as the 401 which ah. is actually more common than the 402, which drops the the value a little bit. So uh, all I can say is good luck because <laughs> I've had issues <laughs> with it. Yeah, one of, one of them's really pronounced. Uh, let me see if there's any other in the photo set. This one is, oh, that's, the, that's a, another shot of the 54. <clears throat> but just okay. to go back. There's our 54, and that is our 51. Congratulations. Do they have three coins, though? Uh, there was a quarter that I didn't want. I didn't want to do too many in one. I wanted to kind of focus okay. on those sets. Okay. And I, I, actually, I actually responded to that one and sent something back about the quarter. Yep. They, I mean, he's attributed these pro – uh, he or she, I'm sorry, has attributed these properly, so it looks like uh, – they're both 402s, which is good. Yeah. The 54, the 402 is um, probably about the same value as the 401, but the, the 51, the 402 is actually a little bit more valuable than the 401. So. <clears throat> they're, I'm, I'm kind of liking finding these. They're, they're common enough to where I can find them and not get too, for, for here and there, and not get too frustrated, but still... Um, there's some valuable ones to go out there. Yes, yes, um, there are I, quite I a got few. Confirmation on one of one of mine was that was pretty valuable that uh, I'm going to be sending in I'll do a follow up on that. Is, I'll do a full video on that one once I get all the results back. Yeah, these are easy to cherry pick. So, I mean, I was uh, at a coin show just this last weekend, and the dealer. Uh, he was not really wanting to show anything. He was trying to get me to buy stuff and say, "Hey, you want to buy this? You want to buy this?" And I was like, "No, I'm just I just want to look at the Franklins." And uh, I cherry picked a '54 right out of his his uh, <laughs> his case without even looking through a magnifier. So '54 is very pronounced, just like the '55. So you can cherry pick them pretty easy. Okay. Boy, we got some good stuff being said about us in the chat, you guys, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah, that were funny looking. I know. Well, they were talking about you. They were like, who's the new guy? Jeez. Who invited him? <laughs> hey, A and B, see you chick, later. The chick's pretty hot, but that ball guy's got to go. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Whatever. A and B. A and B. See you later. A and B. G. No, you guys. You guys. Bugs bunnies. As much as you guys appreciate us, the feeling is mutual. I'm telling you. We love the enthusiasm you guys show every time we go live. I mean. Absolutely. Awesome. You keep us busy during the week, but. You guys are growing, and it's so obvious. It's amazing. Oh, from Javon Pay, off center strike. Well, is it? Yeah, it's interesting. But let's see the reverse. It's an eighty-two P. And that side's normal. I'm going to test the chat really quick. <laughs> For those of you who have come to our stream, 
before. For those of you who might know, Coin Dragon, Amber, you guys don't participate. With that obverse looking like it is, and that reverse being normal, what would you say? Oh, look at that smarty pants, Shannon Smith. That's correct. So yep. This is um, applause, applause. Right. Woo -woo. <laughs> this is actually a misaligned die. Can we see the obverse again? Yeah. You see that the reverse is completely normal, totally centered. But the obverse is a little off. This one is actually pretty far off for a misaligned die. You typically don't see them um, that far off. So I'm going to share something real quick like. I miss the Play-Doh days. I know, and I have Play-Doh, and I have like <laughs> big size and everything. You know, Chris, I was... Uh, Chris, I was thinking that when we were looking at the Canadian, how I really wish I knew how to whip up the play doh the way, the way uh, Ken used to. Ken was good at playing with play doh, that's for sure. Yeah, but I, yeah. I learned, I really learned nailed down double dives was from his play doh. Hey, that this looks really little ditty here is from a blog spot called Adventures in Coin Roll Hunting by our very own Mr. Christopher Rhodes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I will, and actually the link is in our description too, but if somebody, one of our mods wants to throw up his link, that would be fantastic. So this is the difference between off-center strike versus misaligned strike. On the left-hand side is the off-center strike, and you can see it's off on both sides. And it'll be like, if you flip that like our coin split, you'll see the design on an off-center strike will be on the same side. Um, you can have misaligned dies. You can have obverse and reverse misaligned dies. But that's completely something different. We won't go into that. On the right-hand side is the misaligned. This one's just, I mean, it's, it's probably out of mint tolerance, but just barely. And you can see on the left-hand side of that 1999D, it's a little bit misaligned, but the reverse is normal. So that's the main difference between an off-center and misaligned die. The biggest difference is that an off-center is a problem with how the planchet was fed into the striking chamber. It was not fed in the striking chamber correctly. So for whatever reason, it was a little bit out of the collar, off-center, or whatever. Um, a misaligned die is a problem with the die. The actual die is a little bit loose or, and it strikes the coin a little bit um, out of alignment. So it's a die issue where an off center is actually the planchet, how the planchet was fed into the striking chamber. And that's why it's on both sides of the coin. Misaligned will be Typically, just one of the dies will be misaligned a little bit. That's why you only see it on one side. So, all right, enough of that. Make sense? Yeah, make sense? Chris, Jabate, Jabate's coin looks nice in, in that you don't see misaligned dies that this far off. When you begin to see, uh, some of the devices cut off, but that's what they really need. Yeah, you can see the whole coin. I mean, every single one of the intended devices on there, despite that, it's cut at just the right place. What's that? What's that? Oh, misaligned die. Yeah, so, you know, this is your normal setup. You have your dies are lined up perfectly normal. You got your hammer die, you got your anvil die, and they are supposed to line up like so. Uh, in this case, this is what happened, and uh, it's very odd to see them this far off, as as the panel members have stated. Um, what's really cool about it is you get the awesome effect on the front. Obviously, that's the die that was misaligned, but it also affects the reverse. Uh, in that same area, you're going to see a lot of weakness on the details on the reverse. So I've actually found these by mistake just quickly looking through my change by 
seeing the weakness on the other side and I knew something was up and I'd flip it over and it's either going to be a cut or it's going to be a misaligned die. Christopher, why doesn't the die strike the collar? Uh, well, the die actually probably is striking the collar. Um, you're going to get collar clashes. Yeah, and, it, and, it probably is. And the collar did not prevent the die from hitting the coin. Well, see, the collar is spring-loaded, so mm -hmm. the collar will actually sink down with it. when. Oh, when very, it very good, very good. And that, that's why the collar doesn't get too, too, too much damage. That's that why something like this. Is because I didn't realize that. That explains that. that. Thank you. Cool coin, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Keep that one. Yep. And it's called oh, the those are actually, I think those are, in my opinion, much more scarce than off-center strikes. Yeah. Um, yeah we're getting into major off center strikes that still show the date. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're scarce, but uh, an everyday average off center strike to me is much more common than this. This is something that they're going to want to fix right away, or they're going to start having some trouble. They're going to cause damage to the dies. They could damage the collar die. Um, and obviously the coins are coming out pretty goofy looking. So, you know that they're going to want to fix it right away so you're not going to find a whole lot of these and uh for, furthermore i think uh in the error community uh this line dies are very underrated yes. uh, compared to some of the other ones and you also see that too on the secondary market they, they just, you know sometimes you look at laminations and you know why did that lamination sell for three times that amount of money to a misaligned die. It just blows my mind. Very now, you don't hear the term a lot, misaligned die. If you post coins on Facebook and stuff and you're like, gosh, why does this look funny or whatever? And you'll you'll get an answer. Someone will answer you and say, it's slightly misaligned. There's a tolerance for it. Um, it's regular, you know, within tolerance or even a little bit out of tolerance, misaligned dies are not uncommon. The, this type is uncommon, where actually part of the design is gone, and um, yeah. So if you get a little bit of a coin that's got a rim a little wider or a double rim on one side, and and it's, uh, the rim's thinner on the other, don't get too excited. <laughs> Paul, I'm, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, yeah. Paul, I want to share my screen. I want to show you this. Please Maybe explain the difference between a. Whoops. James, uh, yes, your, your uh, messages are coming through, very James. Nice. Yes. Very Ooh, nice. That's a nice one. Now, this is a, you told me this is a broad strike. So is, there must be a difference between struck off center and a broad strike. Well, so here here's the deal. If it's struck off center, it's almost always going to be mm -hmm. a broad strike. And the reason okay. for that is, is because it's being struck outside the collar. Outside the collar. So it actually allows the coin to expand a little bit. If you would hold this up to another normal quarter, this one here is going to be slightly larger um, in diameter at, at least some point on, on the edge. You know, it's it may not be larger all around, um, but it, it's going to be slightly larger in diameter. So while studying off-center strikes and misaligned dies study broad strikes as well. Yeah, kind of and some family. are more drastic than others. Um, you know, this one's, this one's this not... Is so a, this is an uncentered broad strike. Okay. Centered and uncentered. Yes. Okay, I remember that now. Yeah, when, when, they, when they appear off-center by around 10% or less, you can make the argument that you can either call it a, an off-center strike or an uncentered broad strike. Um, when they when they get beyond the ten percent, uh, they usually turn over to just simply off-center struck. Okay, thank you. I've, now, seen, I've seen I've seen some uncentered broad strikes where you still have a full rim on the opposite side. Yeah. And, and like, like Paula said, you can actually have a centered broad strike where something may have malfunctioned with the collar, 
Uh, maybe the collar was stuck in the down position, and the, the planchet still somehow found, found its way to the center of the chamber and was struck. But since there was no collar around the outside the edge of the coin, it allowed it to expand. And sometimes those end up as die hats. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times those are multi-struck. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, a, a nickel will be about the size of a quarter. So they stretch and, out and that's good. because yeah that's because of the pressure of the dies and the fact that there's no collar to hold that those coins from expanding um you know thank god for the uh what do they call that the stroke or you'd be crushing it into oblivion and you wouldn't have anything left what am i missing it would be life out then How did you like my 2019 Lincoln? It's not small, it's thin, as they would say. Ah, uh, 2019 Lincoln. I don't remember, James. Sorry. James was trying to type something to me in chat, and I was ignoring him. Not on purpose. It's really hard sometimes, you guys, to keep up with chat and... And I, I got to where I was a little bit better than um, in the past, but I haven't done this in a while, so oh, I, I can remember to read chat more often. I think it was James Eubanks that had the uh, uh, 2019P Lincoln Shield sent with uh, die crack retained interior die break. And uh, I uh, gave him a oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. on uh, Facebook. Yeah. On the date, there's a very similar one, yeah. Yeah, even on uh, Cuds on Coins. Right. Yeah, yeah you, you posted the link to the Cuds on Coins thing. Yeah, I looked at that link. It is very similar. It makes me wonder if it's not a, a that an earlier of that uh, die yeah. state progression. It's it's not really 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 certainly a progression of that same Cud you know, or mm -hmm. same die break. Yeah. The uh, coin yeah, community true. forum had a discussion on it too. So, uh, oh, did it? yeah, I've put a link for that in uh, Facebook too. Oh, awesome! Nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a very cool one. I love seeing those new errors come through and stuff. Uh, I wish it well, and actually, he could probably still submit it to Cuts on Coins as a different buy stage. So, very cool, James. Yeah, you're you're killing it, James. You've been finding some cool stuff. The more you look, the more you'll find. The more you look, the more you'll find. You're not going to find anything if you don't look. And the more you know, the more you will find. Can't win the lottery if you don't play. Yep. And don't yeah. be afraid to go outside of your comfort zone by any stretch of the imagination. I do it all the time, and I amaze myself with what I still find. Absolutely. Yeah, take risks, too, if you want to want to get there. Yep. So I want to mention to everybody, I didn't get a chance yet. Um, I'm going to go back in after we're done on the stream and I'm going to put all of our moderators um, links into the description. But please, if you get a chance, uh, say thank you to our moderators or the people in blue. Um, actually, Coin Dragon, Jeff Stanley, Coins and Ghouls, they're on the panel, so you can just ignore them. <laughs> But uh, Amber panels in here. Um, do, 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 do. Well, Blues, he's on the panel too. But typically we have like three or four. We have Sindelicious, we have Ida, we have uh, Big Red Bullion, formerly known as um, Redneck Stacker. <laughs> and he's just a pretty face. We just keep him around because he's a pretty face. The rest of them actually do stuff. <laughs> but uh, they, they a lot of times um, they're overlooked, but they're they they're very busy in chat. They keep the chat straight. They answer a lot of your questions. Many of them have they have just as much knowledge, if not more knowledge, than some of us on the panel. Me. <laughs> um. So yeah. So make sure you thank them, and I'll get their links uh, in the description. And if you like the show, I think we're done with coins. I think that was our last coin. Yes, Jeff? I got one more if we want to oh, see it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, Martin, we will. Uh, we're going to do a much bigger video from some of the emails the last few days next Monday. 
Yeah. And um, it's going to be right before our bye week. So that works out perfectly. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too because we might have something new coming up for our bye weeks. So let's finish the emails. <laughs> All right. So I'll read this one since this is the one I kind of looked at here. Um, hello, live coin QA panel. I recently found this 1971 Nepal 10 PISA coin in brass. It's one of the United Nations FAO circulated commemorative coins, Food and um, Agricultural Organization. Uh, these are just some commemoratives that got that they were circulating commemoratives that were supposed to encourage countries and to grow more food and invest in agriculture and stuff like that. Um, they were issued by over 300 countries from 1968 to 2009. Nations who issued coinage were recipients of UN-based projects designed to increase food through fishing, farming, and livestock programs. This coin is showing some extreme uh, concentric lathe lines on the reverse. The center appears to be just south of the uh, cow's undercarriage, which is off center from the coin. The lines are definitely raised. I try to illustrate that in these pictures. Thank you for your insight on this coin. So it's got a cow. Moo. No. <laughs> anybody listens to techno, Scooter has a pretty cool song called Behind the Cow. Check it out. Scooter? <laughs> Scooter. Oh, Scooter. Yeah, Scooter. Cuds on, Cuds on bovines. Cuds on bovines. Dot com. <laughs> Utterly interesting, Frank said. Wow. Bovines. Um, bovines. I don't know if that's an utter. Is, is that coin from Nepal or Nepal? <laughs> Nepal. Nepal. <laughs> Nepal. <laughs> But, um, so you can see here the center is just about right here, the center of where the lines are going around. Can you zoom in the utter way? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Carl wants a good view of the utter. Original. Yeah, the utter. Couldn't help it. So just going to explain late lines. Well, this one's kind of interesting because now that uh, Jeff pointed out, I know we looked at this one earlier, but I didn't even take notice. Those lathe lines aren't centered. Yeah. Which is, is really weird. It, it They're clearly lathe lines, um, but they're not centered on that. Is lance. that planted centered? So that, that's really interesting. What is the purpose of a lathing on a die? Well, so your die starts out as a steel rod, okay? It's just a large cylindrical rod. They use a metal lathe, uh, nothing fancy. It's it's just a, a metal lathe, and, and they kind of smooth out the face of that die prior to hubbing it. Um, in most cases, they polish those lines off that are left behind by the tooling. Or they're obliterated when uh, the the die is hubbed. Okay. In some cases, those lines uh, stick around, whether it be from you know tooling that's kind of worn out and maybe making uh, larger, deeper grooves in the face of the die. Uh, I'm not really sure why some get left behind, but in in my experience, almost always, uh, with the exception of this. Uh, they start in the dead center of the coin and work their way out. Mm -hmm. Now, these aren't on the coin. They're on the die used to strike the coin. Right. These are, these um, are raised. So what's really confusing about this one is now that I see it's not actually perfectly centered. That's kind of weird. Um, so I, I, it, it might have been a larger... Uh, rod or a larger die at some point in time when it was first mm. uh, honed down and lathed and then maybe I, I don't know that that one's kind of weird but what's another interesting fact about this one is it does look a little not so centered yeah well center is right about here 
Yeah, and I would think center would be more, yeah, right about there. So it, it's definitely right. off center, which is odd. I, I haven't seen any lathe lines that were off center like that. So there, there's some something else going on here. But also interesting is the fact that we still see these lathe lines, and we're also seeing a lot of die deterioration around the outer edge of the uh, the coin, uh, specifically around the the letters. Um which tells me that the die was in service for quite a while. So it's odd to see that there's still lathe lines showing. Uh, Coin Dragon, you cannot lathe off center. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't think you can. These, these machines are spinning so fast, the centrifugal force would probably blow it apart uh, if it weren't centered properly. You'll so. shoot your eye out. And you, can, and, you can, <laughs> and you can find these on U.S. coins. Is it the, the 96? 96 D. D. Um, uh, but you, uh, don't uh, find, you typically won't find them in the center of the coin. You'll no, find you them around that. the outer perimeter. I have a beautiful uncirculated example of a 96 D with very strong lathe lines, courtesy of Miss Amber Pinnell. I have one too. I get it. One thing, you guys, I've said this before. I remember where I got almost every single coin I have. Is that weird or what? That is really weird. Here, I have one right here, as a matter of fact. Let's, In yeah, my handy dandy errors book. <laughs> Let me pull my mic or scope up. I have lots of these. For a while, I was like in a competition with someone I can't remember who, but it might have been Ken. <laughs> Ken loved these. Yeah, lathe lines are, are cool to find. There are a few other years on US coins that are known oh, yeah. um, to have them. 96D is the most common. Um, and of course, obviously, uh, ooh, there's, that's a nice example. That's the 96D, I presume. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's what you can find on the ninety six D. And this is like the probably the most common year and mint mark to find them. I think no, there not. are some nickel years that have them in the center on the reverse, I think. Um, Let's see. I'm, I'm going to look it up. There is a website. Uh, Jason Cavalier yeah. is uh, documenting these as people find them. I can't type and talk at the same time, apparently. Okay. So while he's doing that, um, I'm just going to mention a couple things because we're trying to keep our our stream down to about an hour and a half every week, you guys, in which I'm really surprised that we filled up that much time. Um, yeah, I thought we were going to come short. I did too. So we talked about our bye week. Um, we're doing we're in a little bit of discussion to maybe um, those of us on the panel that don't have anything to do during our bye week, maybe going ahead and going on live and just answering your questions in chat. Um, obviously, we're not going to be able to answer any questions that require photos of the coin. But, um, you know, we can certainly just chit chat and answer your questions on that Friday might, you know, give us something fun to do. Um, we also discussed we're, we're no longer for our Monday night show. We are cutting off the email. Um, if you have not sent your email in by midnight Eastern time Saturday, it will not be answered or be put on the show potentially until the following week. So if you want a chance to have your coin show on the live show, make sure you get it in before Saturday um, midnight Eastern time. Because we're really having a lot of people sending emails Sundays and, and Mondays especially. And we just don't have time before the show to, we've been trying to crunch and get those answered and stuff and we don't have time. We're just getting too many emails, which is a good thing. 
We're not complaining, but no, we want to, we want them. I mean, that gives us a good field to choose from. Yeah. So or, th or 30 minutes before our live stream, right? Shannon. <laughs> no, no more, Shannon. No more. <laughs> Bad boy. Chris, Bad you boy. Want to You're in timeout. No, I'm just kidding. Chris, did I want to what? You were starting, you were going to show something or say well, something. Well, yeah. so actually, website. you know, um, at doing a little bit of research there, uh, I was trying to find the website. I actually okay. found uh, Ken's blog, the One Million Pennies blog uh, project. I, I put a link in private chat. Uh, if somebody that has like more than one screen open could copy. Oh, yeah. Chat. I think that doesn't link and send resources. Is that Jason? Well, well yeah. this is Ken's blog, and he has a link that actually takes you to errorvariety.com, where Jason has the 35 different dates uh, attributed and listed. Oh, um, nice. There you go. But but Ken's article is, is really nice in that he actually added – a, uh, a Kennedy half dollar, a 1990D Kennedy half dollar, which was submitted by Mark Mills uh, with very strong lathe lines. Um, so if, if somebody could copy that and paste it to the- I uh, did already. Okay. That's a great link to click on, folks. Um, you know, Ken had a lot of really good stuff there. So- Absolutely. Oh, it's going up like 6 million times now. So there it is, there it is, there it is. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for us. Does anybody have anything else that they wanted to? Uh, if I forgot to mention anything. Um, I, think, I think what I'll do, so sorry to cut you off, Paula, um, okay. because exactly, words to live by, Chris. Because, uh, because the new Morgan and Peace Dollar are coming out on. Um, was that Monday, right? Monday, new time, East Coast time. Um, I'll, I'll jump on for a live stream for about half an hour on Friday. If anybody's interested for a little Q&A, kind of get yourselves prepared to order these. And, you know, any other questions that you may have? Like, you know, another one that I'm sure will come up is uh, how do I grade these? So you get like the first strike. Um uh, designation on the slab and all that first day of issue and all that great stuff so um yeah but yeah we'll, we'll jump i'll jump on friday and whoever else is interested mm -hmm. talk about kind of gearing up for that release are you going to uh, do that here or on your channel no no on here on my oh. point q a and, then, and I'll, I'll put a link in my channel or talk about it in a few videos this week for that okay, event very cool very cool. Yeah. That would be and, nice of you to do there, Sean. But only half an hour. My time is pressure for my <laughs> discharge by the hour. And it's a Friday night. Good night. Friday night. Why not? Grab grab your favorite libation and let's do it. That's right. That's or right. Or edible. Well, whichever floats your boat. All right. So I think that's it. Um, you guys, we... If, like I said, we have hats and t-shirts for sale on our website, um, livecoinqa.com. Um, you, there's our email up above to send picture, uh, to send coin questions. Um, we have instructions on for submitting. Please one coin at a time. Ask a specific question. Send clear photos of the front and back of your coin and the specific area in question. Close <laughs> and clear. Please, one point at a time per email. And uh, thanks for coming, everybody. And it was so nice seeing everybody and being back up on the panel. We love having you guys back. Amber, I'm going to send you a link as soon as we click on live if you want to pop up and talk and chat with everybody. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Thank you. And peace out. Have right. a great night, y'all. Night.